Egads, right? My first thought as well. Hey, the initial visual may offend our refined senses in the modern parlance of drag racing, but it doesn't mean that these guys, as wildly creative as they were, happen to be wrong. No, this is not going to be some golden defense on the merits of three-wheel dragsters, but it will be a fun look back at two cars and two teams that panicked California track operators whenever they showed up in the early 1960s. First, Kenny Ellis. Kenny Ellis wasn't the first man to have a three-wheel dragster. For example, the Arfons boys had their garish Green Monster 1 a half a decade before Ellis brought his theories to life with partner Leon Wilton in the late 1950s. The difference is, Ellis was certainly the highest-profile champion of this three-wheeled cause for a good long while. The three-wheel dragster that Ellis and Wilton brought out in the late 50s started with a 283 packing six carburetors and eventually graduated to the supercharged program you see here. Basically, he and Wilton had to talk their way onto every single track they showed up to. Track operators and fellow racers were horrified. The tech inspectors didn't know what to do, and the two guys became experts in pleading their own case to simply get their car on the racetrack to see if their theories would prove correct. Unfortunately, I don't know who manufactured this particular initial chassis, so if you do, leave it in the comments. Now, by the time Ellis and Wilton were making real power with their blown 283 Chevy, this initial chassis was taxed beyond its limits. Not giving up, the pair advanced their cause with Scotty Fenn, the irascible and irrefutable chassis genius of the 1950s drag racing scene. Loving a challenge as well as anything that would torque people of power in drag racing, Fenn started with one of his K88 chassis, of which he produced thousands over the years, and started the process of modifying it for a single-wheel front end. Scotty Fenn built the car you see here. Wilton and Ellis dropped in a gnarly 292 cubic inch small block Chevy with an ISKI cam, worked Corvette heads, and a healthy 671 blower. The first test runs the car made were hairy. Fenn moved the engine position back, and then the car was a dream to drive. When this story first appeared in July of 1962, the car had been 968 at 161 miles an hour, but it wasn't done yet. By 1963, this car was really getting it, running 870s at over 180 miles an hour with regularity in places like San Gabriel and Fontana. The 292 now had a decent load of nitro in the tank, but there's one last chapter here. Somewhere in the 1963 or 64 time frame, Ellis, who was a master metal fabricator, had the back of the car updated. The same front end appears on the car in these photos, but the three-point roll bar, Hemi engine, and body are all updates. In this form, with its blown early Hemi, the car ran a best speed of 192 miles an hour. This can also be considered the ultimate form of this car because by about 1967 or 68, three-wheel dragsters were banned even by the AHRA long after the NHRA had already washed their hands of them. Ellis was a competitive racer on four wheels until the middle 1970s when he retired to be a full-time fireman and metal fabricator. He built many beautiful bodies for dragsters and other machines over the years, but Kenny's car was the much more version of the two that we'll see here in this video. When it comes to the three-wheel dragster of Gary and Don Cook, Jeff Johns, and Pete Hedges, we know they had to have gotten some inspiration from Kenny Ellis, and we do know they got some actual mechanical guidance from him on how to set up the front end and the steering. But after we get past the fact that their car had three wheels like Ellis's, the similarities stop there. Kenny's dragster mostly followed the norms of the day, minus one tire. This car? This thing was completely and utterly wild, and fast. On its first day at the track in January of 1963, with Jeff Johns driving, it went 877 at 177.84 miles an hour. How? Well, the car used a 110-inch wheelbase, sat 42 inches wide, and had no suspension of any type. The engine was a 471-blown, 297-cubic-inch Hemi that was mounted sideways behind the driver, drank 25% nitro, and got force-fed 14 PSI of boost from the blower. The rear wheels were chain-driven, the car had no transmission or clutch, and the launch pattern was absolutely insane. Using small caster wheels, the car would be pushed to the starting line. The caster wheels would hold the slicks off the ground and were controlled by air cylinders. Jeff Johns would fire the car up, get the motor spinning, get the tires spinning, and when the flagman moved the flag, would hit a button that would drop the car off of the caster wheels onto its rear tires, which would be spinning somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 miles an hour, and the car would leave in a fog bank, as you can see in these photos. The initial story in the April 1963 issue of Popular Hot Rodding resulted in such an avalanche of letters, Popular Hot Rodding put the car back on the cover in July of 1963. 
1963. In that second story, they took an even deeper dive into this totally wild and weird dragster. By the time the second story had run, with months of racing under their belt, changes had been made. There was an attempt at a body that covered the chassis, which was a giant failure as it made the car unstable. The body is shown on the cover, but never seen again in the story. Once the body was jettisoned for good, a small wing was added to the front of the car to keep some downforce on the single front tire. Adjustments were made to the size and scope of the handmade drive sprockets and other factors of the car were refined. This car would compete like Kenny Ellis's in a three-wheeled format until about 1966, and by that time, the car had managed the best ET of 825 at 182 miles an hour. No thank you, no thank you 1,000 times. So what became of this car? Well, after the three-wheelers were officially outlawed, the guys did the only natural thing. They put a fourth wheel on it. Still odd from the roll cage back, it was no longer the total freak it was with only three tires when it had a normal axle with two front wheels. No, these two cars weren't the only three wheelers in drag racing history, but they are two of the most interesting for sure, and they're also the two that actually got some coverage in the magazines of the day. I can't say that I'm personally disappointed by the fact that dragsters have four wheels, but I'll be honest, given the chance to watch these two freaky nitro-powered trikes get after it would be something I'd buy a ticket to see. Didn't know three-wheel dragsters existed? Now you do. Like and subscribe for more fun racing history and automotive content.